let us make a statement. In case of non orthogonal frames, orientation of the local axis that is x m y m may be such that this cannot be aligned or mapped to the same orientation of the reference axis that is x y for example, in figure B, member 1 and 3 have this problem, is it not? In such cases, what do we do? What is required? Hence, the member stiffness matrix cannot be directly written with respect to the reference axis. But there is a solution for this problem. can be transformed to the reference axis system one good news is that k i written for member axis or local axis system will be valid, you do not have to change that. Only thing we have to do is, we need to transform this matrix that is k i written for x m y m frame need to be transformed. to k i of x y frame. Okay? We have to do this. This is true when members are non orthogonal. Please understand this does not demand any additional effort to determine i. So, no additional effort is required to derive or compute k i with x m y m frame. It is already known. So, whatever method we have been using, methods being used earlier are all valid. I have to only transform this that is all. Okay. So, let me write k i x m y m needs a transformation into the reference axis x y. So, please understand k on x y frame cannot be written directly 
for non orthogonal members ok it is very very important. So, what do you mean by non orthogonal members when the local axis of the member does not map align match exactly with the global axis or the reference axis they are called non orthogonal members. So, for these members the stiffness matrix for the member cannot be written directly on the reference axis system. You can always write only on the local axis system and this should be transformed ok that is the problem here. Now, let us take a simple beam element and see what additional data is required to use this element in the non orthogonal frames. The question is now we are taking a beam element which is slightly modified in sense to suit to be a member of non orthogonal frames. If you remember in the last set of derivation we actually neglected axial deformation. Is it not? Now, let us have a beam element, let us now have a beam element which includes axial deformation also. So, let us take a beam element. So, let me mark the beam element here which is fixed at both the ends is our basic model ok. Let us mark the degrees of freedom we already know this is theta p this is theta q and this one is delta r is delta s. Yes. Now, let us introduce two more displacements axial at the jth and kth end of the member we call this as delta t and this as delta h ok. The member has got the length l i of the member and this is my j th n this is my k th n therefore, this will be my x m axis and this will be my y m axis and the origin is at j at the end ok that is the origin ok. I do not have to explain you the rotational coefficients of stiffness matrix and the displacement coefficients at p q r and s. So, now the stiffness matrix will be of size Six by six because there are six degrees of freedom. So it means P, Q, R, S, T, and H. Similarly, P, Q, R, S, T, and H. Okay. So we already know this matrix. So let us write down that matrix. Let us write down only this sub matrix. P Q R S P Q R S. So, this is going to be K P P K Q P and this is K Q Q and this is K P Q rotational coefficients. Once I get this I can find out this value which will be simply K P P plus K Q P by L i this will be minus of k p p plus k q p by l i ok and this value will be k p q plus k q q by l i and this is minus k p q plus k q q by l i. The third column will be k p p plus k p q by l i that is this sum by l i 
and this will be k q p plus k q q by l i and this value I am writing it here, I am just writing it here, there is no space. So, this value is going to be the sum of these two by l i. So, k p p plus k p q plus k q p plus k q q okay, by l i square and this value will be simply minus of this value that is k p p plus k p q plus k q p plus k q q by l i square. Whereas, the fourth column is actually the negative of the third column which can be filled up as it is. Okay? So, this already we have derived there is no confusion of this let us derive only this matrix separately. Okay? So, let us take a beam. undergoing axial deformation by unity. Okay. So, now this will be k t t and this has to be okay, k h t that is force in the tth degree by giving unit displacement in the tth degree force in the h th degree by giving unit displacement in the tth degree. So, k t t will be actually equal to a e by l of delta u we know this is 1. Therefore, this simply a e by l and k h t will be negative of this value because this is going to be opposite to k h t. So, minus similarly if I give unit displacement at this dimension So, I will get k h h and k t h. So, k t h or k h h will be positive a e by l of delta u which is 1 this will be negative a e by l. So, I have a matrix now which is for t h t h only which will be a e by l minus a e by l minus a e by l and a e by l. Okay. Let us substitute this in the full stiffness matrix and write the full stiffness matrix of the structural system. And we also know the rotational coefficients that is k p p is 4 e i by l and k p q is 2 e i by l and similarly k q p is also 2 e i by l and k q q is 4 e i by l. We know this we have already derived them. Okay. Let us now write the full stiffness matrix for the member at the local axis. Okay. Let us note the labels p q r s yes, t and h. So, p q r s yes, t and h. So, this is 4 e i by l, this is 2 e i by l, this is going to be 6 e i by l square, this is minus 6 e i by l square and these two will be 0. This is going to be 4 e i by l this is 2 e i by l this is 6 e i by l square minus 6 e i by l square again 0. So, this is going to be 6 e i by l square 6 e i by l square 12 e i by l cube minus 12 e i by l cube again 0 this is going to be minus 6 e i by l square minus 6 e i by l square minus 12 e i by l q and 12 e i by l q and this is 0. Let us say these are all zeros 
and this will be a e by l minus a e by l minus a e by l and a e by I get the full 6 by 6 matrix of the ith member at the local axis x m y m. Okay? I do not think any confusion in this specific case. Now, the argument is if the local axis of the member does not orient with the global axis of the reference axis of the system, I need to do the transformation. So, I have to derive the transformation matrix to transform this matrix to the reference axis system. So, friends, let us look at the summary. We said when the members are non orthogonal, the reference axis x y does not map with the local axis x m y m. Okay? Therefore, k i which has been derived for x m y m is still valid, but only to the local axis k i x y reference axis cannot be obtained or derived directly. So, k i x m y m should be transformed to the reference axis system. Okay. So, how to do this that we will see we have also derived the full stiffness matrix 6 by 6 including the axial deformation for a standard beam element which may be required in case of analysis of non orthogonal members. Thank you very much.